Hello, welcome to this video on an introduction to partial derivatives. You see, we've looked at multivariable functions. We've looked at multivariable limits. Uh, what's next is to look at multivariable derivatives. In order to really understand what's going on with the multivariable derivatives, you got to make sure that you know the notation. And so to help you know the notation, we can remember what we did notation wise for for first semester calculus. So if y is equal to f of x, single variable function, single variable calculus, what happens then when it's time to write the derivative? There's different symbols that we use. The most common symbol that we use is y prime of x because it is a function, the derivative is a function, and prime is to represent the derivative of a single variable function. Sometimes we drop the of x part, we just put y prime. Um, there is another notation where we use the letter d it's a Leibniz notation where we put dy dx, the change in y over the change in x. And then um, if we can replace the y with f, we can say df dx. And so that was before. So what about now when your function is a function of x and y? When it's time to use notation for the derivative, then instead of prime notation, we can't use that anymore. What we do is subscript notation. What we're going to find out is that there's more than one first derivative. We have to say the derivative with respect to which variable, and we indicate that in a subscript notation. We could keep the x comma y just to remind ourselves that it is a multivariable function in general, or we can drop the x comma y and just leave the subscript. There is a D notation, but it isn't an actual letter D from the English alphabet. We got to go to the Greek alphabet and use the lowercase delta. And so delta z, delta z, delta x, that's the derivative of z with respect to x, but partial derivative. On the next slide, we'll talk about what partial derivative means. And then you can replace z with f, just like above, so um, del f, del x. And you can do these with respect to y, too. But anyway, I just want you to know the notation, and now we're going to dive in. The most common notation that I would use would be the subscript notation, but there is this other notation that you should know about. All right, great. What is a derivative? What is a partial derivative? Well, to understand what a partial derivative, you got to understand what a regular derivative was from Calc 1. Remember, there was a limit definition. The limit is h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. It looks, the, the partial derivative looks just like that. You see, there is the f of x plus h, there is the minus f of x, but there's this other variable there. It's y. But what you do, though, is in taking the derivative, you hold that variable constant. You treat y like a constant and you differentiate with respect to x. Let's start off with a really simple but like polynomial looking function. 5xy minus 7x squared and the rest of that there. And we want to take its x partial derivative. The partial derivative of f with respect to x. Okay. And so we're going to find f sub x. What I'm going to do is take this uh, function. You, you won't always have to do this, but I want to recolor it so you can see um, more of what's going on. You're going to focus your attention on the x's. So I've made them magenta. There's some y's in there. There's a bunch of numbers in there as well. Those numbers are coefficients. The way you treat that coefficient should be the way you treat the y. You treat the y like a constant. So I've colored the y, I colored the, the, um, the, the terms with y's in them only and red. And then there is one term that has both x and y in it. So what I've done there is I've put the y with the 5, treating it like a coefficient. And now here comes the derivative. That right there was just a rewriting of the function, color coding it so we can have an easier time when it comes to take the derivative. You've got to focus in on the x's. The derivative of 5yx gets treated just like the derivative of 5x. The constant is the derivative. So the derivative of 5yx is 5y. If your term just has x's in it, then you do it like calc 1's power rule, minus 14x. If your function doesn't have any x's in it and you're taking the x partial, its derivative is 0. There's three terms there that have no x's in them at all. They're not changing with respect to x. They're constant. Derivative is z. Okay, and then the one term there, 3x, has 3 as its derivative. 
And then you can get rid of the colors and get rid of the zeros. And there it is. Our X partial derivative is that. This is laying the foundation for the rest of calculus. If you understand derivatives, then you'll be able to get a grasp on the applications of them. Then you'll be able to get a grasp on integration, which is finding antiderivatives. So hold the other variable constant. All right, great. So then that is the X partial, the partial with respect to X. Let's do this all over again for the partial with respect to Y. Now the definition has f of y plus h minus f of y all over h. And the x is there. It's just treated as a constant. It's called the partial derivative of f with respect to y. It's a function itself. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to regard x like a constant. Differentiate with respect to y. Same function as last time. But now we're looking for the partial with respect to y. Color coded here where I change all my y's into magenta. All my terms that just have x's in them, I make them red. Okay, and then the term that has y's in it, um, if there's an x in there, I put the x with the constant. I treat it like a constant. The first term has as its y derivative 5x. Second term, there is no y's in it. So the derivative is 0. Third term, it's just a y. So it's like calc 1. Minus 2y is the derivative power rule. 3x's derivative is 0, 2's derivative is 0, minus 6y's derivative is minus 6. Get rid of the colors. There you have it. There's your partial derivative. So that was pretty straightforward. Now let's look at some more difficult ones. Our next function is going to be arctan of y over x. And we want to take the x partial. Okay. It's, a, it's like a chain rule, actually. You, the arctan of anything has as its derivative... 1 over 1 plus that thing squared. Then the chain rule comes in and says, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. But it's with respect to x. You treat that y like you would treat a constant. Mentally, you should think about it as like 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over y, uh, I'm sorry, negative 1 over x squared. The derivative of y over x then is going to be negative y over x squared. Okay. To simplify this, we'll uh, multiply the negative y in the numerator, we'll multiply the x squared in the denominator, distribute it, and it works out nicely to be simplified to be negative y on top of x squared plus y squared. Now let's take the y partial. It starts off the same way. It's an arctan, so it's 1 over 1 plus that guy squared. When it's time for the chain rule, though, taking the derivative of the inside function, now it's going to be treated as a derivative with respect to y. So the x is like a constant. You know, what is the derivative of 1 seventh of y? It's just going to be 1 seventh. What is the derivative of y over x? It's just going to be 1 over x. Now, to accomplish the same kind of action that happened before with the simplification in the denominator so nicely, uh, what we need down there is an x squared. That's what made it happen so well. So what I'm going to do then is get clever and multiply both top and bottom by x here. So I can have my x squared in the denominator to simplify it. And I have the same denominator as the, as the x partial has. It is x squared plus y squared. But now the numerator is an x. So you did it. You just found the x partial derivative and the y partial derivative for a complicated function using the chain rule. For a single variable at least. Good job. Let's do one more. Let's actually take this y partial here, x over x squared plus y squared, and let's take that as our function. And let's take its x partial and let's take its y partial. So the x partial of this function, there's x's in the numerator and x's in the denominator. We can't get around it. We execute the derivative by doing the quotient rule. Square the bottom, Bring the bottom up to the top. Multiply by the derivative of the top with respect to x. So, one. Put a minus sign. Leave the top alone. Multiply by the derivative of the bottom with respect to x. So, 2x. There's no y. Like y squared is treated like a constant. Its x derivative is 0. And then simplifying, if you, if you uh, look at x squared plus y squared, but then you take away 2x squared, you end up with y squared minus x squared as your numerator. And the denominator is just what it was before by squaring it. Okay. 
All right, great. And then lastly, we have the y partial. So it starts off like the quotient rule. You bring the numerator up to the denominator. Now you go and take the derivative of the numerator. But the numerator is an x. Its y derivative is 0. You lose half the numerator. You put the minus sign, you work with the other half. And so you leave the numerator alone and you take the derivative of the denominator, the original denominator, with respect to y. So 2y. And then you just end up with minus 2xy as your numerator. Okay. All right, great. So that is the end of this video. It's already past 10 minutes. Sorry about that. But um, I'm just here to help you through this journey. My name is Nakai Rimmer. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Uh, like and subscribe. Reach out to me. Um, check out my website if you need some resources. Uh, a workbook full of midterm questions with solutions. It's like a solutions manual for midterms. Take a look at it. Um, it's at calccoach.com. The link is in the description. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.